Have you ever wondered how fiber fusion splicing works? Well, stick around, we're about to get extended. So fiber optic fusion splicing is useful when you need to extend or otherwise joint two cables together uh, to be able to make a longer cable. And you can use it for putting ends on cables and one of the advantages of that is you can use pre-polished and pre-manufactured uh, cable ends that are going to be more resilient than anything that you can apply in the field. And also uh, were made under the appropriate uh, clean conditions. Uh, fiber optic Fiber optic cable is definitely very sensitive to dirt and dust and everything else like that. So uh, the manufacturing process associated with the ends in particular uh, is very tightly controlled. So if you can use something that's already pre-made, pre-tested, and verified, and just be able to do a, um, I would say, a lower risk type of uh, junction in between that and infrastructure cable that you may have pulled uh, or a regular cable that you need to repair, uh, it's definitely a huge advantage. So let's get right into it. So we're going to cover first just a couple of our tools that we're going to be using today. So we have our fiber optic fusion splicer. We have our cleaning equipment. In this case, we have isopropyl alcohol, 99% uh, inside of a dispenser. Uh, we have some chem wipes which are just, you know, lint-free cloth. We have our cleaver, right? And the fiber cleaver itself is a blade that moves perpendicular to a mount that holds the fiber. So you get a clean 90 degree cut because fiber optic cable at the end of the day is all glass. And if you cut glass at an angle, you'll get a weird refraction like a prism. So you don't want that or you don't want it shining into different directions. You want it to stay in alignment so it has the lowest loss possible uh, as it's traveling through the cable. So this is the tool that allows us to do that. Next we also have our, our stripping tools. right? And this allows us to do the outer jacket, which we don't have on the cable that we're using today, but it would be used to be able to strip that off. Uh, it also does the coating on the fiber itself. And the coating is actually what we're gonna see here. So it's just the color-coded uh, fiber to be able to identify what it is, uh, but acts as the first layer of protection or the primary layer of protection uh, for the fiber itself. The next stripper that we have is for the inner cladding. And this is the optical uh, component of the fiber that actually keeps the light inside the cable. Uh, so it sits right directly attached to the fiber, uh, very, very close, and it's very, very thin. So you notice how small this hole is. And that hole is actually the exact diameter of the fiber itself. So it's certainly something that uh, you gotta be a little bit careful with so you're not making the fiber or anything else like that. So the important thing here is just to take things slow. And then if we need to do any kind of cutting of any of the uh, fiber or anything else like that, we have a set of scissors, and these in particular have a single serrated edge. That way it doesn't slip against the uh, scissors themselves, and they're extremely heavy duty. Um, so hopefully we won't need them that much today. But the, the last thing, and that is absolutely the most important thing to wear, is uh, safety glasses. Fiber optic cable uh, is very difficult to see. Uh, generally and if you get it in your eye it's going to be very uncomfortable it will cut your eye and it's possible that it can actually burrow into your skin uh, if you're not very careful about it so it's very important to keep track of all of the ends that you cut off uh, and account for them to make sure that they're disposed of properly so let's go ahead and get started so what we're gonna do is first we have this piece of equipment okay which is <laughs> It, this is actually a fiber reinforcement piece of heat shrink. And this has a stainless steel wire inside of it that is very rigid uh, inside of the heat shrink itself. And what this will do is the fibers will both go inside here and we will center the junction point uh, to be able to reinforce it. So when we actually make the junction with the fusion splicer, it's going to heat up the glass uh, and actually physically melt it together. And the issue with that is that 
it will actually cause it to become very brittle. So this heat shrink tubing sleeve actually reinforces that connection so it's less likely to break. So we're gonna slip it on first because otherwise we're not gonna be able to put it on if we fusion splice the two cables together. These cables already have connectors on them so obviously we wouldn't be able to fit any a smaller piece of heat shrink over it on top of that. So let's start, we're just gonna move this over to the side a little bit. We're gonna strip the fiber right now So the, the next thing that we're going to do is actually strip off the uh, inner cladding, which we're probably not going to be able to see, but you'll have to trust me, it's there. All right. So we're just going to take our cladding stripper and just run across it and we see that's actually the inner cladding right there. That's the first fiber. We're going to clean it right now. So we're going to open up our isopropyl alcohol. All right, give a few pumps to get isopropyl alcohol onto the paper and then pull it across so that way we hear that it is squeaky clean. Now we know our fiber is clean. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cleave it. All right, so we have our cleaver open. We're going to place our fiber down at 14 millimeters, which is appropriate for our connection and we're going to close our retention clip. Now it's holding it so we can close the lid, right? And notice how it's perpendicular to the blade. And we'll close this. We will press. That performs the cut. We're going to hold the fiber on the, out, on the other side. And now we see it has been cut. So we'll release our fiber from the cleaver, close the cleaver, put it to the side. We will then clean our fiber once again, just to make sure that everything is as optimal as possible. And then we will bring in our fusion splicer, right, which is a motorized contraption that is able to align the fibers automatically. So what we see inside are we have the two hold down clamps for the fibers themselves, some guides in the center, and then we have the two electrodes, as well as some lighting and some cameras, which you'll see in a second. So what we're gonna do is we're going to carefully place the fiber without touching anything, so that way we're not making the fiber dirty. And we slowly place it down, just shy of the electrodes. And in this case, we went a bit too far. So we're just gonna pull it out a little bit. All right, and this will move and articulate to be able to align the fiber to the other. And so we need to leave it a little bit of room by putting it just shy so that way it's able to make that alignment. Okay, so we have that stripped. Let's place it inside of our fusion splicer. Same procedure as before. And clip in the retention. All right, so now we see that both are just shy of the actual electrode itself. So what we're gonna do now is close the lid and the process will start. So let's center up where the screen is gonna be. Right, so we see it's aligning, and it doesn't like the cut 
on the right fiber. So it's automatically done the QC. We see on the left, it's pretty much a 90 degree angle, but on the right, we see that little angle on one of the sides. So we're gonna take it out and we're gonna recut it, which will involve restripping. All right, so now I have recut, restripped, and recleaved both of the fibers, uh, just to make sure that they're uh, both pristine and ready for the fusion splicing itself. So let's see how it goes. Excellent. So the fusion splicing completed successfully, and we see that based on the visual inspection through the cameras, the fusion splicer is saying there is a 0.01 dB loss or attenuation inside of the cable because of that splice. So right now, both of the two fibers are fusion spliced together and are one cable, but we still need to protect it, right? And we open up the lid, And we open this up. We see they are now one fiber. But we need to protect this connection because it's very, very brittle. We're going to slide our heat shrink over it. All right, we're gonna center our connection. And we're gonna place it in here. This is pretty much just a heat shrink oven and close the lid. It's going to do 15 seconds of heat and that will shrink the tubing effectively so it becomes a single and hardened cable. All right, so there we go. So that's our completed cable. So that brings us to the end of the video. In future videos, we're gonna be covering how to test fiber and also perform troubleshooting. So be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and hit that notification bell. That way you know the next time we're getting extended. So until then, take care.